Let's talk about rhomboid pain on the scapula. On the right side also, you have one on the left side. Uh, we're primarily going to be talking about the one on the right side. Either if there's pain or tightness or soreness, you may think that you just need to lay on a tennis ball or get it massaged or do some type of stretching exercise, but you may find that if you do that, it comes right back about an hour later. I used to have rhomboid pain for literally years and I had no idea what it was. Being a chiropractor, I thought everything was basically a bone out of place and you just adjust it and the problem's gone. I wish I would have known what I know now back then because the actual cause was referred from something else. Like when you step on a dog's tail, he barks through his mouth, right? Are you going to mess with the mouth? No, you're going to take the pressure off the tail. So a lot of people with muscular uh, problems in one part of their body uh, don't realize that it can be referred from a completely different area. And so there's this one nerve called the dorsal scapular nerve. It comes out of the fifth cervical vertebra, and it connects to the rhomboid as well as another muscle called the levator scapula muscle, which is right here, just beneath your trap. So that one nerve coming from C5 connects to this muscle and your rhomboid. And if there's any pressure on that nerve, you can have discomfort in those areas where it's just, it's always irritating, it's always tight, it's always in a spasm. But what I didn't know at the time I had this problem was there's another connection to those group of nerves in this lower part of the neck uh, called the phrenic nerve. So the phrenic nerve goes from the diaphragm from your neck all the way down to the diaphragm in the front part here on both sides. And when it connects to the neck, it connects to several nerves. And so if there's a problem in the diaphragm area, that can send signals back up to your neck and cause a little tension, causing a little bit of a rotation, uh, an irritation to the nerve, and keep you with tightness in those two muscles on the right side. And any amount of massage or trigger point therapy is never going to fully resolve it. Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to resolve it. I will say there may be 5% of the time there's an actual problem in those muscles that you need to do some stretching, and I'm going to show you a really good way to handle that. But the great majority of the time, the problem is at the bottom part of the phrenic nerve underneath your diaphragm in an area involving three things. One is the gallbladder. Two is the little tubes that connect the gallbladder with the liver. Those are called bile ducts. And three, your liver. You could have any number of problems. You can have gallstones. You can have an irritation with the gallbladder. You can have bile sludge that is causing distension in your tubes, the bile ducts. That's called coleostasis. And that really comes from a lack of bile. Or you can actually have an enlargement in the liver. That's called a patomegaly. And that can actually even come from having a fatty liver. If you've ever heard of foie gras, which is a French word, what they basically do is force feed like corn or other grains into these geese or a duck to fatten up the liver. And that liver can enlarge by 10 times, okay? So when we eat corn or carbs or sugars, our livers also get fatty and they can enlarge to the point where they can press on that nerve as well and cause that same uh, problem on the right side. And of course, some people watching this video might have the problem on the left side. Well, this same thing applies because if you have um, this sludge blocking the bile ducts uh, right by your gallbladder, they do cross over to the pancreatic tubes and ducts, and it can cause a backup in the pancreas as well, causing the pain on the left side and the back part. The same thing I'm going to talk about applies to whether you have it on the right side or the left side. So the real problem with this pain back here is either a problem with the gallbladder, the bile ducts, or your liver. You can do a real simple experiment to figure this out. You can massage or press underneath your right rib cage, right where your gallbladder is, about an inch down and an inch off the midline, okay, to the right, and just start massaging this area. It'll be a little bit sore, but if you massage it for like, 10 seconds, it should give you relief on your right shoulder area into the rhomboid. Now, the pain and discomfort will come right back, um, but just the fact that it produces some relief tells you there's something going on in the right uh, lower area, whether it could be the gallbladder or bile duct, liver, we don't know yet. But my suggestion is just to start eating 
to improve that whole area, avoiding certain things and eating certain things to improve it to the point where that problem completely goes away. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, I no longer have that problem because I changed my diet. So what are the top foods that irritate the liver, the bile ducts, and the gallbladder? Grains. Then you also have sugars. And you have omega-6 oils. And they're very irritating to your, your gallbladder and your liver, and they're inflammatory. So if you were to go out to a restaurant and order something deep fried, they're going to use some of these oils in the process. And when you eat them, you're going to feel bloated underneath the right rib cage, and you're going to feel tension in those muscles eventually. And then you also have other things that are uh, deep fried like chips. Just take a look at what the ingredients are. It's going to be some type of oil. They fry the corn or the potato in and that would also aggravate it. Other foods that are high in omega-6 would be the nut butters, uh, almond butter, peanut butter, but any of the nuts uh, could irritate this area as well. Then you have alcohol that can irritate it, junk foods, processed foods, heavy meals, eating frequently, Keeping your whole digestive tract filled with food all the time is going to be very irritating to this area. It's going to cause the liver to have to work constantly, creating more problems. So those are all the big culprits. Now, what I recommend is to have moderate amount of protein with your meals, okay? Not necessarily eat high fat, but don't avoid saturated fats, but eat high quality protein, like from eggs, fish, grass-fed meats, things like that, as well as consuming a good amount of vegetables or salad at the same time you're eating these proteins and fats. So have your big salad, okay, first, and then have your protein or fat with each meal. The vegetables or the fiber in the vegetables will help you to uh, increase the flow of cholesterol through the liver and through the bile ducts. And the vegetables are really, really good uh, for the liver in general. Eating just meat or fat without vegetables is a bit hard on the liver. And of course, when you cook the heck out of the vegetables and don't eat them raw, you don't get to uh, have the enzymes in those raw vegetables to help you. And then the other thing that's really important is not to eat so frequent. Do intermittent fasting. There's a couple things that I'm going to recommend to help um, thin the bile, to allow things to kind of flow through. There's a product that um, you can just look online to get it. Uh, Amazon It's called Tudka. T-U-D-C-A. So tutka is a type of bile salt that helps to thin the bile. You would take two of those in the morning on an empty stomach and two in the afternoon on an empty stomach. In addition to that, find a good uh, bile salt supplement that you can take with a meal and you would take two of those after the meal. So now this extra bile will just help to uh, take the relief off the liver, the gallbladder, and the bile ducts and allow bile to flow through this area nicely. And you're going to find over the course of a week or two weeks, there's going to be a lot of relief in this back part. So that solution is pretty much going to handle like 95% of all cases. Let's say there's problems in that actual area because of your posture, the way you're sitting with the computer, or an injury. For that, I would recommend getting the mobility sticks. These are really cool exercise, I don't know if you call them tools or exercise equipment, there's these sticks that you can do, these amazing stretching exercises. I recently got them and I love them. I'm not affiliated with the company, but I'm going to put a link down below to check them out because the exercises you can do with these are amazing for not just for your rhomboid and the muscles up through in the shoulder, but for the entire body. I'm always investigating different uh, pieces of equipment and different exercises, and I really like this one a lot. Now, since we're on the topic of referred pain, okay, um, there's a really interesting video that talks about other parts of your body that are painful, that are the cause is not coming from where you think it is. And if you haven't seen this video, I put it up right here. Check it out.